In the past on this channel, we've taken a look at command line interfaces before. We took a look at, you know, what it is and what are some of the simple commands you can use. Later on, we actually looked at several command line utilities such as ffmpeg as well as the 4files command. Now, unfortunately, all of these videos sort of exist in their own vacuum. You know, it's just a video in which I talk about this thing about the command line. And what that has resulted in is, well, some people actually asking me, you know, why is there a need for the command line? What is its usefulness or uniqueness above graphical interfaces? And yeah, there is a general, you know, sort of disconnect between yeah, I know this thing exists, but why is it useful? What I'm going to do today is I'm going to share with you some users I have of the command line. I'm going to show you some scripts I've actually written to simplify certain processes. And hopefully this at least gives you some examples of how, you know, a command line tool can be applied in a workflow. So yeah, hopefully this will be of use to you. But we'll talk more about this after the break. Hello and welcome back to another Random Wednesday episode. So before we begin talking about, you know, the actual scripts, I want to talk to you a little bit about the setup. Essentially what I have is a folder in the C drive where I actually save several batch scripts that, well, I do use from time to time. In order to make these scripts executable from any directory, I actually have to add it to the system path variable. What you want to do is to go to your system properties, look for the advanced settings, click on environment variables, select path. Basically, you will find you know, a list of all the paths that are in the variable so far. You want to insert a semicolon and add the folder at the back. Once this has been set up, moving forward, you will be able to access basically any executables in the listed folders from any directory on your system which of course is extremely convenient. And so with that out of the way, let's look at, well, some places in which I have actually made use of command line scripting. First and foremost, in making my videos. Now, as you know, from time to time, I actually do screen capture. In fact, for videos like say the graph theory episodes, I spend a lot of time doing screen capture. And what I do is essentially I have my slides open I capture it while providing narration at the same time. So what I end up with are video files that contain both 60 frames per second video, that is the frame rate I capture at, as well as raw audio coming out from my mic. Both these things need their own separate processing. To do this, I'm going to have to first separate the audio from all the video files. So in order to facilitate that, what I do is I have a simple batch file that performs a four files call. Recall that 4files essentially runs a command for every file in your directory that matches a certain pattern. So in this case, I'll match it on mp4 files since that is what my screen capture program actually produces. I'll create a new folder, strip out the audio, and basically throw the audio in that folder. To do that, I make use of a call to ffmpeg. I'll then push the WAV files through Audacity for batch processing that is done by Audacity, so it's not very relevant to this particular video. But of course, in the end, I'll need to merge everything back and also perform the processing I need on the video. In particular, the video is captured at 60 frames per second and I want to bring it back down to 30. But instead of simply dropping every other frame, what I do is I actually blend pairs of frames together. So that actually creates a very nice sort of motion blurry like effect, which makes it feel, you know, not as jarring as 30 frames per second footage. So I have to do that as well as merge in the cleaned up audio. So yeah, in order to do that, once again, I have a four files command that calls ffmpeg. And what ffmpeg does is it will look in a folder for the cleaned up audio. It will look in the original folder for the original video and basically do a replacement on the audio and at the same time perform the frame blending that I've described earlier. The resultant videos are basically all ready for me to cut down. The audio is already sounding good and the video has been basically reduced down to 30 frames per second. So my editor doesn't have to, you know, sort of chew through all the extra frames. So yeah, that is one application of the command line 
and it actually saves me a lot of time because well it's something that I can just leave on its own to run and basically not care about it until the results come back. So the scripts we've seen so far are pretty simple. Here's one that is a little bit more complex. This one makes use of a function called robocopy and essentially I needed this because at one point of time I was working with several web development frameworks and they created a whole bunch of temporary files that were nested many many folders deep. So much so that it's actually impossible to delete them because Windows actually has a restriction on the maximum path length. I think it's 256 characters so if your path is so long that it exceeds that, Windows actually doesn't know how to delete a file. In looking around the internet to find a fix to this problem, I found a nifty solution on SuperUser. Essentially, it makes a call to this tool called Robocopy, which just isn't limited by the path length. Now, the purpose of Robocopy is to basically copy directory X to directory Y. But you can actually supply a switch that says, I want these two directories to look identical. What this means is if your source directory is actually empty and you say you want to copy that to you know the directory you actually want to delete and you supply it with that flag, what's going to happen is in order to make these two directories look identical, Robocopy is simply going to wipe out everything in the destination directory. And that is what we are exploiting to perform the delete. So yeah, that's essentially what the script does. Basically, the way I've written it is it will take in the name of the directory that, you know, I want to delete. The script will begin by creating a temporary directory. You know, that is the empty one that we're supposed to use to supply to the robocopy function. It will then perform the robocopy operation before actually deleting both folders, both now empty. I guess the somewhat more complex part of the script is the part where I check to see if, you know, an input has actually been supplied. If it isn't, I actually jump to a part that says, hey, there's no inputs before exiting. There are actually more elegant ways to do, you know, this sort of if else conditional thing. But at the time of writing this, I still wasn't very aware of that. So I sort of used the old school way. But yeah, that is essentially yet another application of well, using the command line to simplify certain operations. I would never remember the entire syntax to using robocopy to delete a folder. So instead, just turn it into a batch file and use that batch file instead. All right, let's move on to the last one. This is actually the simplest of all three scripts, but I've actually added a lot of things that ended up making it look more complex. Here's the deal. When I actually edit a video, you know, it normally comes out as an AVI file. For some reason, a lot of places don't actually accept this. For example, you know, Instagram doesn't like it, Twitter doesn't like it. And so what I find myself doing very often is to actually convert to MP4. It's not a particularly difficult FFmpeg statement. You know, I just say FFmpeg, take in the file name, set the quality if I want to, and then give it an output file name and FFmpeg will do the rest. But, well, if you have to do that quite often, it starts to get kinda unwieldy. So, well, let's write a script called 2MP4. My main simplification for this is in the fact that I only want to type one file name and not have to specify, you know, both the input and the output file. Basically, the script is supposed to replace the extension for me and produce a file with the same name, but with a different extension. So this is where things get a little bit fancy. I do actually have to do some string slicing operations here. And essentially what this is doing is basically saying, well, get rid of the last four characters in the input file name. I set it to a variable called fname. And later on, I can actually call ffmpeg by using both the original name as well as the new name appended to .mp4. Of course, that is enough for the script to work, but as you have seen, there are many other lines. Essentially, I've actually implemented the capability to insert a command line switch, which will change up the quality of the output video. All I'm doing within the script itself is to actually check the second command line parameter. If it's empty, we will use the quality I've specified here with a CRF of 17. If it says dash HQ, then we'll go for a higher quality. 
If it says dash LQ, we won't specify any quality at all. And what that means is it defaults to a pretty low quality, you know, one that is still acceptable, but the file size is pretty small. In the previous segment, I mentioned that, you know, there is a more elegant way of doing if and else, and you can sort of see it here. You can actually use brackets and certain statements will be executed depending on the conditional. So you don't have to do the whole branching thing, which of course looks a bit less elegant. Speaking of elegance, this script actually does make an assumption. In other words, it will break sometime down the line. And that is if a file extension actually has, you know, more than three letters, this doesn't actually take that into account. But it has served me well up to this point, so I'm going to just, you know, KIV that bug and fix it when I have to. And there you have it. These are three different use cases in which I have actually used the command line to simplify some process or to speed up certain actions. As you can see, the nature of the command line, you know, the very text-based nature, makes it very easy for us to expand upon the capabilities that are present there or to actually set up things that are convenient for us. For example, in the case of RoboCopy, you know, multiple statements now become just one simple statement. So yeah, hopefully this gives you a better idea of how the command line can be useful to us. But that's basically it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in a playlist of my earlier work on computing and computer science topics. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.